Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a moment in history uh, that I think you should know about and be aware of. It was when two of the greatest rulers uh, on earth ever met face to face uh, and they were discussing the nature of power um, and a great war that was going on. One of them was, um, was one of the rulers of uh, one of the greatest nations and one of the greatest kingdoms ever known uh, to man, um, uh, the Roman Empire. And the other was the king of all kings, uh, Jesus. You heard about it today in our reading. Uh, the person was Pilate and Jesus and a conversation that happened between the two of them. If you don't know who Pilate was in the history of, uh, of the world, he was what's known as a Roman prefect. And he uh, came and stood in the stead of Caesar at that time in a given area or space. Uh, and for that time, he was the prefect of uh, Jerusalem and was uh, the Roman authority over all the people in Jerusalem at that time. Everything uh, that passed uh, through the, the people uh, and, or passed through uh, the times and happenings of Jerusalem at this time had to pass through this man, Pilate. He bore the power and authority of Caesar who lived in Rome and uh, was deeply powerful. He could uh, give or take life uh, at just a word. He could um, command uh, you to do things and you would have to do them immediately. He could command whole people groups to do things and they would have to do it immediately. Um, and he bore a whole bunch of authority. And in the story that we heard from today uh, in Matthew 18, we heard a conversation between him and Jesus, uh, the ruler and the king of all kings, though people did not see it. And today on Christ the King Sunday, I think it's good for us to recall this conversation because it tells us uh, some important things about who Jesus was as a king, what his kingdom was like, and also I think about us who claim him as our king um, and the king that he bears. And so if you would, uh, you can turn in your scriptures to John 18, uh, and we'll look at verses 33 through 38 as these two great rulers come head to head and speak to one another. Uh, at this time, Jesus has been betrayed uh, to, uh, to death, has been handed over to the Jews who have given him a false trial and then take him to Pilate for the kind of final word of authority as they want to see him put to death. So he enters Pilate's uh, headquarters and goes into Pilate's, uh, the rooms where Pilate discerned things and met with his officials uh, and stood before him. Pilate uh, interviews him, asks him uh, a question. Are you the king of the Jews, he asks. Jesus answers him and says, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it about me? Pilate answers him and says, I, I'm, I'm not a Jew. I don't, I don't know your customs. I don't know your laws. I don't know your politics. I don't know who you are. I know that I'm an authority. I know that uh, you may think you're an authority, but I don't, I don't know. And says that to, to Jesus. Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus responds to Pilate and says these very famous words. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I may not, uh, not be delivered over to the Jews. But, and then he repeats himself these words, my kingdom is is not of this world. We know that uh, Jesus' kingdom and kingship resided in eternity and in heaven at the right hand of God the Father. That's where all of his authority and power came from and where it resided. And that when he came to earth, though he was a king and though he is a king, uh, that this ultimately was not his kingdom. He was bringing the kingdom to uh, the world around him. 
But as Pilate asks him, are you some sort of earthly king? He says, you've got me wrong and you do not understand my kingdom or my kingship. The conversation goes on. Pilate says, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say, or you said it, that I am a king. For this purpose I was born and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. I want to meditate for a second on Jesus as king uh, and his kingdom not being of this world and what that means for us as Christians. I really think that it means just two things, okay? But they're very significant for us uh, in our lives. The first is this, that if Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, then your king as a follower and believer in Jesus is ultimately not of this world either, okay? That you do not have a king who resides in this world. Um, but this is, and this is significant for a lot of reasons, I think, actually, uh, because we can often put our hopes and our dreams in all sorts of authority figures in our world, right? Uh, we can put our hopes in political people, we can put our hopes in relationships, or in bosses, or in individuals who promise to give us power, and meaning, and security, and identity. We look at all sorts of people in hopes that they will be our king, right? We live in a very political world in our nation. You can't flip through more than a couple radio stations before hearing some sort of political figure's voice uh, as you draw close to elections. You can't go five minutes without seeing some sort of commercial or some sort of person pop on the screen saying, hey, listen to me, let me be your authority, let me be your ruler, let me be your king. Okay? And we can put our hopes in those sorts of people. Uh, I think it, now maybe more than ever, uh, we have all sorts of people vying for your uh, kind of attention and, uh, uh, and submission to say, hey, please vote for me, see me as the authority in your life. But for us as Christians, we can be involved in politics, we can think about politics, we can hope in, uh, in individuals, but it's always tempered by this one truth that our king is not of this World. The person who we ultimately hope in and wait for is not of this world. I like the way that Psalm 146 reminds us of this very truth. It says, put not your trust into princes or kings or rulers or authorities or into a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Right? The psalmist is just looking at the politics and the kings and the rulers of his world and is tempering their authority and how much he trusts in them. He says, yeah, there are princes out there. Yeah, there are kings out there, but they could be here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, yes, there are nations out there. Yes, there are authorities out there, but they are like the grass of the field. They wither and fade, and then the next person comes in. So who is ultimately going to be your authority and your king in this life and in this world? Jesus' words are very instructive. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. If his kingdom is not of this world, then our king is also not of this world. And that's, I think that should temper the, the kind of hope or authority that we give to any single individual. Put not your trust into princes, but you put your trust into the prince of peace. Put not your trust into a son of man, but the son of man, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Let him be your ultimate and real authority in life because he is the only one that does not fade or perish. So, Jesus' words, they mean that your king is not of this world. Also, I think that your kingdom is not of this world. If his kingdom is not of this world, then us too, our kingdom, is not of this world, right? Which means, uh, and I, I see it all the time, that we can put all our kind of hope or trust in places sometimes. Uh, like, it is wonderful 
that we uh, are Americans, that we live uh, in a great nation, that we live uh, in a place with a great history, uh, with, with great institutions, with a great constitution, uh, wonderful things that, that come with uh, the nation and world that we live in. But ultimately, we as Christians even look at that and say, eh, this is not my final stopping place. This is not my final home. As good as it might be here and in this place, it is just a fragment and a figment of my imagination of what greatness will come in the kingdom that awaits me. Right? So it tempers our own hope in this place and points us forward not only to a king, but a kingdom where we will rest and reign with our Lord Jesus. I like the way that Hebrews talks about this and tempers our own understanding of kingdoms. Uh, so Abraham, you remember Abraham, called by God out of his kingdom and into a different kingdom. Right? He said he was given the promise uh, by God that he would make a great nation, that he was going to go to Canaan, and that God would give them a land and a place and a home. But even that didn't satisfy for Abraham. He even ultimately was not looking for that. And Hebrews tells us that. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in a land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to to the city that has its foundations, whose designer and builder is God, right? The nation, the hope, the kingdom that even Abraham from the very moment of his calling was looking for was not an earthly kingdom, but was ultimately a kingdom that was yet to come, right? So don't put your hope in, in princes or kings. Don't put your hope in great or grand nations or promises of any one place to be fully satisfying. Because ultimately we are transitory people waiting and looking for a kingdom and a king that is to come. And Pilate didn't get that in the conversation as he talked to Jesus. He was befuddled, confused, asking if Jesus was the king of the Jews, not understanding when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, just Pilate's scratching his head, not understanding the truth of what he is talking about. I'm always struck uh, by Pilate's final response. So um, we believe that all truth is found in Jesus. Uh, Jesus says this. He says, For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth in myself, in my own person. Everything that I say and speak and do, that is truth. That is reality for you to place your hope and your trust in forever. But I'm always, always struck by Pilate's response. Right? Jesus says, I have come to bear witness to the truth. And Pilate says, what is truth? And turns and walks away. Are you a king? Where's your kingdom? What is truth? And standing before the king of kings and the ruler of the nations and before the living truth himself, Pilate turns and walks away from the very answer uh, to all of those questions. Who is our king? Where is our kingdom? Where is our final truth and hope at? I pray that it's not so with us, right? And I think that's why John writes it. It's such a staggering moment as you read it to think, wow, you are standing right in front of him, Pilate. You saw it right in front of your eyes. You heard the truth from the mouth of the king himself, and you turned and walked away. May it not be so with us who follow and call him the king of kings and the lord of lords when he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the king, I am the kingdom. May we say, tell us more about that. Help us understand more in, in, a, in a greater way what it means to have you as our king to await your kingdom, and to, to call you our first and final truth. All truth is found in him. So, for us, as people on this day, as we await this great king, await this great hope of a nation, and stand in the truth and promise of Christ, may we do so humbly, not as Pilate, 
turning away from him, but instead saying, you are our king, you are our Lord, we await your return in our coming kingdom. And may we be found in him always, in that truth. Would you pray with me together? Jesus, your kingdom lasts into eternity. Uh, your kingdom uh, was brought to us not by power or might or authority, but humbly by the laying down of your son's life. May we call him forever our king and Lord, our resting place in our home, our truth and our life in this world and the next. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.